Blackburn Rovers put three past Walsall as they climbed to second in the table once again. But it could have, should have, would have been a lot more than that. We'll talk about the match and much more on today's show. That's right, folks. Back once again with another match review. This time picking apart the 3-1 home victory against Walsall. Now, before we get stuck into the thick of things, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Next up for Rovers is a long away trip to Plymouth Argyle. We'll talk more about that match in a preview show coming up in about 24 hours or so. Uh, but yes, 3-1 victory. It's, it actually flatters Walsall a little bit because it could have been like about 10 and their one goal was a bit of a gift, a bit of a howler. I think maybe Nyimbi, maybe Downing. I'm not too sure who to point the finger of blame at. But it certainly wasn't Mulgrew because he was putting his feet up somewhere. Uh, probably at home with a nice good cup of tea. Um, but yes, a fantastic performance. Uh, and a lot of that credit for that win has to go down to Tony Mowbray for chucking all of his attacking options onto the field at the, uh, for the, in the starting eleven. Payne, Armstrong, Dak, and of course, inform Danny Graham. And inform he is indeed with two of the goals today. Bradley Dak getting the other. Uh, Graham opened up the scoring very early doors. Five minutes on the clock. I barely sat down on the couch myself before uh, he opened up the scoring. Uh, then he got his second on the, on, of the night on 32 minutes before Walsall, like I said, get themselves right back into it with a defensive howler um, by the Rovers' defence. I'll just call it Rovers' defence. Uh, Edwards with the, with the with the goal, and then uh, a second half once again, the wrath of Mowbray uh, unleashing down on Rovers because really could have been four or five at half time, but Dak took that in on board and came out the blocks once again and again I barely sat down after taking the pooch out for a walk. Uh, yep, on the 47th minute, Bradley Dak scored. I don't know maybe his 12th goal of the season, but anyway, let's take a look at it a little bit more deeper at the statistics. Uh, look at that for do uh, for possession, 63% for Rovers, 19 shots, 9 of those bad boys on target. Uh, and I think a lot of them were down at Armstrong. Had so many efforts that were, you know, I think he had the, the last real effort of the match against the, against the crossbar. But he had so many more. And it was a shame that he couldn't get on the score sheet. Uh, nine, uh, nine shots on target, 10 corners, none for Walsall. And look at the state of that. Walsall, the worst uh, of the two on fouls with 12 to 5. Uh, let's take a look at the start in 11s. First and foremost, let's take a look at Rovers. They started like this. Raya, Naimbi, Downing, Williams, Bell, Dax, Smallwood, Bennett, Payne, Armstrong and Graham. It's more of a 4 two, three, one formation, I would say. Uh, but this is my ratings for the players. Ryan got a six, Naomi got a six, Danny got a six, Williams got a six, Bell got a seven, Dak got an eight, Small got a seven, Ben got a six, Payne had a seven, Armstrong had an eight, and Graham had an eight. Yeah, um, yeah the defense, I've got a lot of sixes there, I, I know, and it does look bad, but again, just like Northampton, uh, they had nothing to do, really. But in both games, two defensive howlers, uh, you know, obviously cost us a couple of points on Saturday. Didn't cost us anything today because we managed to put a few of the, the chances, the many, 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 many chances away. Uh, and that's my only gripe with today with, with so many chances and not being able to uh, get any more get any more goal return than just the three. It's a little concerning. Same deal on Saturday when we had so many chances. It was only a 1-1. One, one. Um, so, so yes, it's, it's good to get three points. It's good to get some goals, but we should have, could have, and probably would have had more if, uh, if it was on another day, uh, three points in the bag, important three points back in the second spot, put a little bit of pressure now on Wigan. We're only one point behind and we're one point in front of Shrewsbury. So, um, it goes to the next one on Saturday. I'm not too sure who, what teams are playing who. I know that we're playing Plymouth. Win that, we should still be in second. But obviously Shrewsbury have a game in hand. So we're hoping, I'm hoping, that they stumble. I'm also hoping that Wing Wigan stumble. And then eventually we're going to have to take them on at Ewood Park. And that could decide uh, some uh, end, of, uh, end of season silverware. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. A lot of action to go. Anyway, let's take a look at our visitors. They started the uh, match like this. Roberts in goal. Kinsella, Roberts, Guthrie, Leahy, Chambers, Morris, Dobson, Otsoma, Bakioko, and Edwards. Uh, so uh, they were, they were, they did try and make a bit of a game of it. But to be honest with you, uh, Rovers had the bit between the teeth, and there was there was chances galore. Um, Bennett was ca uh, captain for the day, so he did a cracking cracking job in Mulgrew's absence. No Conway, Conway came off the bench. 
Um, young Travis also come on for some some minutes right at the end. But all in all, good good afternoon or good evening's football uh, for those in the UK. Uh, good afternoon's football for me. Um, but yeah, important victory. Back in the second spot. On to the next one. Plymouth Argo. And they are in a much better shape than that, what they were when they came to Ewood. Uh, they're in 13th spot right now. They're on a bit of a form, but we'll talk more about that in the preview show. Now, you've heard a little bit of what I have to say. What's the gaffer been saying? Let's hear his comments shortly after the final whistle. It's extremely hard. Um, took the game plan on board and took it to Walsall. I felt as if we we had to play like a mass press tonight, really, and really put them under pressure. They would, they're would. they a decent football team. If you give them time to play, they can keep the ball off here and... So we gambled the game a little bit today and I think it paid off. I think we could have scored more goals than we did. Uh, and yet, did we look vulnerable at times? You know, I think we totally expect to all saw better teams might play through as if we play as as gung-ho as that tonight. But um, that's just a tactic tonight to make sure they knew that they were playing against a team with some intensity. And we scored a few, could have scored a few more, but happy with the points, move on to the next game. I said that he's suicidal almost in that dressing room, shaking his head. He said, um, listen, you can see the talent he's got, the, you know, the dynam dynamic nature of his movement when he's on the ball, he wants to shoot, he wants to score. He's, um, he'll have another day where he, he will get two or three goals, but um, listen, ultimately what matters is, is you know, and I could again feel the, the tension, the adrenaline of the team before the game. They were ready for the match tonight and Knew it was an opportunity, the only teams in this league playing tonight, an opportunity to put three points on the board from the frustration of Saturday. But listen, if you take four points in two games all season long, then you're not going to be far away. Listen, he's a diamond of a kid, to be honest. You you, uh, you train every day and, he, and I can tell you now, he trains like he plays. The, the players... The players know Richie's going to catch him in training every now and then. They accept it. You know, sometimes I've been at football clubs where players tackle each other and they want to have a little bust up, you know, they don't, but everybody in our team knows that Richie, that's how he plays. If the ball's there, he goes for it, whether it's a training five aside or whether it's a, you know, a cup final, he's, um, yeah, it's, I, I managed Richie five years ago, you know, I, I know what he's about, that's why he's here, to bring that tenacious, like, you know, you've heard me talk about artists and soldiers and Richie's a, obviously a, a soldier, very much a soldier, but uh, he's got a bit of artistry about him as well by his quality tonight at times. Yes, I do. Um, you know, one or two young players might go and get some experience and play, but, um, which I think is important for the development. There's, you know, the 23s have been doing so well. You know, at times the phone's been ringing off the hook for some of them young players, and and there's a balance between making sure we don't leave ourselves too short, but also they need if they're not going to play in our team, they need to play with men in a crowd that that boo them when they make mistakes and uh, cheer them when they do something good and uh, it makes them footballers quicker and um, so I'm anticipating that maybe some loans out but um, business in I think we've still got probably one more offer in us to a club that have turned down a couple and uh, we'll see whether it gets done if it doesn't I won't stress over it I think we, we're okay as, as we've talked Lenahan's probably a week away um, Corey Evans is back on the bench um, and Tonneson's maybe 10 days away as probably is Gladwin, um, they'll be like new players, some of them, you know, and it'll be difficult for me to pick pick the bench, particularly when you see like Travis looking like he's played 400 games when he comes on, how composed he is and how effective he is. So, um, yeah, we, we, we're OK. So I'm not, I'm not sitting here panicking, thinking we need loads more players because we try to do our business early and um, I think the evidence is there. I think the evidence of Amari and, and, and Armstrong and, and Payne, you know, I think they're, they're decent signings. Um, you know, to look round and see um, Samuel and, and, and Nuttall and, and Corey Evans and you know, whoever on the bench, really, it's, it, it's good. And that'll only get stronger as, as the weeks roll on. Charlie's hoping to play a week Saturday. I think um, there's, there's very little swelling in there. The scans are, are, are good. Um, he wants to be on the grass as soon as he can. He's really positive in the dressing room there. And, um, yeah, so we'd be very hopeful. Charlie's obviously desperate to play every game. And um, we're hoping it's as short a period as that, you know, in the next two weeks, next ten days. But, um, but, you know, let's wait and see. Actually, when he puts his boots back on and gets on the grass, he'll know, particularly with an ankle, how, how, um, how strong it is. Um, 
Harry Chapman was here tonight as well, which was great for the lads who were loving his presence in the dressing room. Uh, he's obviously still our player on loan at the end of the season. Um, so, you know, the, the spirit's good at the moment. It's important to win football matches and we've got a big test away at Plymouth who've been on a decent run of form and um, let's see how we go at the weekend. Well, you've heard what the gaffers had to say. You've heard a little bit of what I've had to say. Here's what the fans have been saying and also the players on social media. Harry Chapman sat in the crowd uh, this evening. Buzzing with that win, boys. We're on flames. He'll be edging closer to a first-team return. Speaking of other players, Bradley Dax said this. Great performance tonight from the boys. DG with another brace on absolute fire. Good to bounce back from Saturday now and on to the next one. The fans brilliant once again. Derek Williams said this. Good win tonight. Another step closer. Need to keep the pressure up. Thanks to the fans that came out. Ryan Nayimbi, great win tonight. Top performance from the boys. Fans were amazing at Rovers. Elliot Bennett said this. Fantastic team performance. An honour to be captain this team in the absence of Big Charlie. Delight for DG on his brace and Dax doing what he does. Unbeaten 18. Or words to that effect. Meanwhile, some players of the past. David Dunn uh, said this. Another great win. A couple of, a couple of hands of applause. And uh, the old blue and white emojis. Meanwhile, Kevin Gallia said this. Some good football and tremendous three points. And move Rovers up to second place. 3-1 uh, against Walsall. Now, how about, how about the fans? Jake Alston said this. Nobody in the squad I'd rather have captain when Choli Mogru ain't on than Benno. Well deserved this last couple of weeks. Meanwhile, Emma Douglas said this. Well played, boys. I'm loving the new front four. Indeed, it was very impressive. Uh, my only gripe is um, that if it's not working... Uh, who do you bring on? But anyway, uh, Russell Prescott said this. Rovers had 19 shots on goal, 10 of which came from Adam Armstrong. He deserved a goal and would have had a couple, but for the woodwork, an excellent goalkeeping performance. Impressive stuff. Yeah, didn't really get to mention that. Walsall's keeper was immense. Some Hollywood saves in there. Deny Armstrong and others. Meanwhile, Andy Neal said this. 18 unbeaten in the league now and 40 points from the run. Plymouth currently have a decent run of form themselves, so winning there certainly isn't a formality. Can't believe it's 20 six years since I was there last watching David Speedy secure our place in the playoffs well let's not hope it's the playoffs let's hope it's something better meanwhile Matt Stilto said this an impressive night at Ewood Park will face much tougher opponents but the pace we started with was incredible DG at the double with a deserved man of the match uh, meanwhile Luke Thornley said this a fantastic win a fantastic performance dominant from start to finish some excellent team goals and excellent individual performances one of the most enjoyable games I've seen at Ewood in a long while meanwhile uh, one love 1875 uh, wrote this good win good football good feeling driving home come on you blues northern rover said this tremendous performance and three points armstrong versus the warsaw keeper show 18 games unbeaten on to plymouth on saturday ben knight on facebook said this professional performance but we don't halfway need to start taking these chances armstrong could have had a hat trick think if he gets one then He'll get on a roll. Gallagher and Mowbray said the right things after the game. The defence isn't switched on enough. There isn't a real leader to keep concentration levels up. Three points. Let's hope then pie and turds slip up at the weekend. Meanwhile, Matthew Grimshaw said this. Brilliant win to get back into the top two. Hashtag promotion push. Frank Andrews, also on Facebook, said this. And the run continues with another win. Just a point behind Wigan now, albeit they have two games in hand. They are going to have a problem, though, with all their rearranged games. If only we had one on Saturday, we'd be standing proud at the top. But plenty of time left. Rovers till he die, he says. Lewis Rabello said this. For a change, a half-decent referee, a great win. And it could have, should have been by a greater margin. But for some stupendous saves by the Warsaw keeper. Also, I'd like to see their goal again, as it looked to me like the scorer was in an offside position when he received the ball. 11,241 was not as many as I'd hoped would attend. Very disappointing. Yeah, it is midweek. People do have uh, jobs to be at and that kind of stuff. So I can see why the attendance was, was not as high as expected. Meanwhile, Rosie Moore said this. Mutuous crashes for the three points, Walsall. I must be an unlucky charm. Have a good evening, all short and sweet. Meanwhile, Ashadair said this. Rovers were class above tonight, but Walsall's keeper also class tonight. Well, that's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. It's been a whirlwind couple of days. Obviously, we slipped up a little bit against Northampton, but back in business once again with that 3-1 victory over Walsall. But now we've got to switch our attention back on the away days down to Plymouth for the weekend. And hopefully, if we win that, technically, we win that, we could go top, depending on what goes on with Wigan and Shrewsbury and all that kind of business. Anyway, 
Thumbs up if you like this video. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. I can't believe I won this hat the whole way through. Um, I kind of got distracted a little bit. But anyway, if you want to check me out on the go, I'm on Twitter and Facebook. Links to those uh, social platforms in the description below. Also, big shout out to the guys at the BRFCS forum. If you haven't checked out their forum, make sure you do so. Link is also in my description below. Great place for you to chat with fellow Rovers from uh, around, uh, in and around Blackburn and obviously around the world. We've got some big fans in Scandinavia, Thailand, and even stateside like me. But anyway, enough jibber-jabber. Until next time, the preview for the Plymouth game, just around around the corner. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll get you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe,